Christian at GN Hot Tubs, I'm going to show you how easy it is to convert a hot tub from 220 to 110 or 110 to 220. Uh, with this tub in particular, this tub came in set up for a 220 electric because the tub is convertible to 110. First step you're going to do is remove the skirt pan on the outside and you're going to find the control panel box. It's typically a plastic box in a range of about 12 by 16. You're going to remove the screws from that plastic box, which I've already done here, and read the instructions on the back. The back will tell you how you convert to 110 to 220. There's a step of changing a dip switch. The dip switch is a little bar on the hot tub. It's a red bar on this model. There's about 10 dip switches. And just change that last dip switch up there to make it go down to the low amp mode before it was down on the high amp mode. Um, obviously, always read all the instructions and follow all the instructions on the back of that box. It tells you all the critical information. The next step is there's a wire that's on the back of that panel box. It's a jumper wire. And that wire will quickly and easily install on this model from J11 to J32. It's a pretty easy setup, but that is critical. That's what's converting it over to the 110. The next step is you install the GFCI cord. The GFCI cord um, made different lengths. Uh, but basically, we'll get fed into this hot tub. Um, you'll feed it through uh, the area here. We have a, a piece of metal in there that holds everything in place. That'll need to be tightened down. But you're going to have a neutral, a hot, and a ground. The neutral, obviously, is marked on this. It lists out there the neutral hot areas. Those will go right into those box areas and you'll be set with the screws. When you install those screws, it is very, very critical they are tight. After you put those screws in there, if you can pull them out, they are too loose. It's also recommended to always use a screwdriver here, not a drill gun. The drill gun, you can strip out those terminal blocks and be very difficult. But again, always test to make sure those are tight inside that area. Um, if they are loose, it can cause a fire and many safety hazards. That's why this typically should be done by a qualified electrician. Last step, you're gonna install your ground wire, which the ground wire is a little spot off to the side here. That'll feed right through that side and slide through that box and then it'll tighten down on the other side. Of course, always be careful with this. You are working with electric after this is plugged in. Um, GFCI cords, you usually don't want to have an extension cord. Some brands allow a small extension cord to be added on. If that is added on, it has to be a very heavy gauge uh, extension cord and you want it as short as possible also. Uh, it needs to be like a number 10 gauge wire as the minimum. After you get all done here, again, double check all those connections. Make sure you have your jumper wire installed. Make sure your dip switch is set to the correct location. If you have any questions, give us a call at a GN in Cincinnati, 513-874-3331, or in Columbus, 614-332-8785. Thanks a lot, and have a great day.